Hello guys, welcome to History Facts. Let's talk about the history of Maria Fireo's infamous convent. Enjoy the video. Despite its expectations of holiness and celibacy, the Catholic Church has been the subject of a fair share of monastic scandal. Nearly all of these scandals, however, pale in comparison to the tales of coercion and wrongdoing that haunt the history of Maria Agnes Ferreo's convent. The nuns in Rome's Sant'Ambrogio della Massima were subjected to sexual initiation rites, sometimes involving upwards of three people. Even after the convent's founder, Maria Agnes Ferrao, was removed from her position, other nuns filled her shoes. By the 1850s, mistress of novices Maria Luisa was enforcing salacious trysts between herself and the nuns in her convent, forging letters from the Virgin Mary, and threatening anyone who questioned her methods. These illicit truths, buried in the Vatican archives for decades, only emerged when scholar Hubert Wolff cracked the case wide open in the nuns of St. Ambrogio. Even more shocking, however, are the lengths to which these nuns went to hide their secrets. The mistress of novices ordered nuns to sleep with her. In the 1850s, the founder of the convent of St. Ambrogio, Ferrao, was stripped of her abbess title for encouraging other nuns to worship her as a false idol. Mistress of novices Maria Luisa overtook Ferreo's role, and, just as her predecessor, she arranged nightly rendezvous with her novices. One nun confessed, Maria Luisa, asked me to lie in a certain position, with my legs raised, while she entwined herself with me, she then made movements and a sound such as I cannot express in words, as she instructed me to position myself so that I could receive her bodily fluids into me. Maria Luisa claimed that these fluids could cure illnesses. She also asked the novices to lay face to face and breast to breast with her as part of their initiation ritual. The convent's founder had a three-way encounter with a priest and a nun. The convent's founder, Maria Agnes Ferrao, was involved in several scandals during the early 19th century. Although she had been a spiritual advisor to Pope Leo XII, Ferrao found herself in hot water when her misdeeds became public. Ferrao not only had an affair with her confessor, but she also engaged in a three-way tryst with her confessor and another nun. She performed false miracles and had two abortions when she became pregnant by clerical officials. Miraculously, Maria Agnes's convent wasn't shut down by the Inquisition in 1816 when she was stripped of her title as abbess. Instead, the illicit activity continued behind closed doors. Forged letters from the Virgin Mary encouraged the assault. Mistress of novices Maria Luisa wasn't just sleeping with the other nuns, she was also carrying on with one of the convent's Jesuit confessors. When the two met up at night, they shook off suspicion by citing reasons of religious communing. In fact, Maria Luisa managed to con the confessor into bed using forged letters from the Virgin Mary. Maria Luisa asked a novice, Maria Francesca, to write the holy letters because of her beautiful handwriting, and soon everyone in the convent was following the holy orders, including the confessor who jumped into bed with Maria Luisa. The confessor claimed their acts were spiritual rather than lustful. One of the confessors at Sant'Ambrogio harbored a secret, he was living under an assumed name. He was actually Joseph Klutkin, an advisor to the Pope and a leading theologian. In 1848, Klutkin began an affair with one of the nuns, and during the Inquisition trial, the confessor admitted that he had multiple carnal encounters with Maria Luisa. Klutkin tried to defend himself. Their affair, he insisted, was purely spiritual, not about lust, Klutkin claimed, but about religion. Even though he confessed, 
Klutkin suffered only mild punishment, the Inquisition ordered him confined to a Jesuit house for two years, and he was stripped of any role in hearing confessions. Sexual initiation rites welcomed new nuns to the convent. Maria Luisa introduced some unorthodox practices to new nuns, including sexual initiation rites. Maria Luisa told the nuns that her bodily fluids contained divine blessings, which could be shared during climax. During the trial, Maria Luisa admitted that the saintly founder of the order, Ferral, used similar methods to pass on her miraculous liquor to Maria Luisa and former novices. Novices were invited to spend the night in Maria Luisa's cell. If any of the nuns complained about the rituals, they mysteriously took ill and died. Princess Katerina escaped from the convent and exposed Maria Luisa. Princess Katerina von Hohenzollern Sigmaringen was widowed twice by age 36. Rather than remain in her native Germany, the princess became enamored with Rome's convent of Sant'Ambrogio and decided to become a nun. Not long after, however, the princess uncovered some suspicious behavior and soon feared for her life. The princess smuggled out a cryptic letter that simply read Save Me. After she discovered the abbess's illicit and controlling behavior, she believed Maria Luisa was slowly trying to kill her. She engaged in an erotic Jesuit blessing. During the Inquisition trial, Maria Luisa was accused of participating in lesbian encounters, venerating a false saint, and murder. But one crime in particular stood out during her trial. According to witnesses, Maria Luisa had engaged in what was termed a Jesuit blessing, but was actually an erotic ceremony. The secret blessing, passed down from the convent's founder Maria Agnes Ferral, consisted of French kissing, among other things. One witness said that the male confessor made the sign of the cross on her throat with his tongue. Sometimes he put his tongue into the penitent's mouth and kissed her on the heart. While receiving the blessing, nuns sometimes fell into a state of ecstasy on their knees before the confessor. Maria Luisa made the princess ingest mercury and powdered glass. Maria Luisa shared an erotic letter with the convent's newest recruit, the twice-widowed German princess Katerina. But when the princess reacted with shock, Maria Luisa decided to eliminate the critic in the most permanent way. Maria Luisa used forged letters from the Virgin Mary to justify her actions. The heavenly instructions, Maria Luisa claimed, told her to end Katerina's life. Many attempts were made, though none were successful. Princess Katerina managed to escape the convent with the help of her cousin. Seriously ill and refusing all food and medicine, Katerina was taken to her family's French estate to recover. Maria Luisa later confessed that she had made the princess ingest opium, mercury, and powdered glass. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.